Hello and welcome, Max Mathias here. Uh, today I am going to be talking about revealed preference. Uh, before I get started, I highly recommend that you watch my preferences and budget constraint videos. Uh, what we're gonna be talking about today is basically the combination of those two. To get the most out of this, I recommend that you watch both of those. Without further ado, let's get started. So revealed preference. So the preference relation, uh, Right, It doesn't have really a name, but that symbol is a simple but robust way to depict a person's preferences. We talked about this in depth in the preferences video. The only limitation is that I'd have to ask a person how they feel about each and every possible bundle to get sufficient information, right? So to basically get a full idea of how a person feels about all of these combinations of goods, I'd have to ask them all of those combinations so that they can rank them for me. The idea behind revealed preference is that I basically just watch a person make choices in their day-to-day -day life, and then from that, I can infer their preferences from these choices, right? So instead of basically asking you how you feel about each and everything, right, basically what I'm simply going to do is watch you make your choices, and from that, I can basically kind of reverse engineer those preferences, right, simply by watching what you do. No need to ask about every possible bundle. The only kind of caveat to this is that we need the budget constraint to assist us in gathering this information. So let's talk about revealed preference in action. I'll use apples and bananas as your example goods. This should be very familiar uh, to you if you watched the preferences and budget constraint video. We're going to say a person has an income M and the prices of apples and bananas are PA, PB respectively. Again, these are all just numbers, right? And we know from uh, the budget constraint video that their budget constraint will look like this. If you watch that video, this will look super duper familiar. We're gonna focus on two bundles on the budget line. It's important to note, uh, I have basically just arbitrarily chosen these. So bundle X represented by that point there. Again, it's just some bundle, some amount of apples, some amount of bananas on the line. And then Y is just a different amount of apples and bananas, but on the same budget line, right? So let's say I observe you choosing X, right? So you go to the store and you buy that bundle X. What can I infer from that choice? So actually take a second, pause the video maybe even, and just think, what can you infer from that choice if I see you pick X over Y? The answer is X is uh, strictly preferred to Y, right? How do I know that? Well, by reasoning, you could have afforded both X and Y, and I saw you pick X. Right, so basically, without even having to ask you, I got information about how you feel about these two bundles. Right, I know you like X more because you bought it. You could have bought Y and you didn't. I can even go further than that. I can say X is better than any other point on that blue line because all of those were affordable, but you didn't buy them. You chose X, right? So X, we'd say, is revealed, is revealed preferred to not only Y, but to everything else on that blue line. Right, so now we're gonna say, okay, let's say prices change, right? So prices of both apples and bananas change just as some new values, which we call P prime. Now let's say at these new prices, I see you pick the bundle Y, the same Y from the last slide. And we'll look at some other bundle Z, which is affordable at these new prices. So from this observation, I can now infer two things. First, and pretty trivially, is that A, I know you like Y more than Z, by the same reasoning on the last slide, right? You could have avoided Z, but I saw you pick Y. But using the information from the last observation, X is better than Z by transitivity, right? The reason why is that you picked X over Y, and then I saw you pick Y over Z. So using that transitivity preference, uh, or assumption, I should say, we know that X is better than Z by transitivity. So this is a way of saying X is indirectly revealed preferred to Z. I'm not directly comparing whether you pick X or Z. Z might not be affordable in your first um, kind of budget line, right? And I'll even draw it so that it isn't. So it's hard to actually connect, compare those two until we get this price change and I see you pick Y, right? Then I know, okay, we didn't directly compare X to Z, but I'm going to say indirectly you like X more than Z because of transitivity. I also then know that at these new prices, X is unaffordable. How do I know that? Well, if it was affordable, if you could have picked it, I know you would have over Y because you did earlier, right? So if I saw you pick X in kind of scenario A, and now in scenario B, I see you pick Y, 
well, I know that X wasn't feasible for you, right? If X was, then you're being crazy in picking Y in this new scenario, right? You picked X over Y before, you wouldn't change that unless X isn't affordable anymore. So just from those two observations, we learn so much information, right, about uh, your feeling not only for X to Z, but then also understanding that X is no longer affordable. So let's update our graph from earlier, right? So X and Y are in the exact same spots. We are going to draw the new budget line with those prices P prime A and P prime B, as well as the new bundle Z. The most important thing here is that we know X must be unaffordable and that Y must be affordable on both. So I'm going to draw it with a red line that looks like that. Notice the red budget line goes through Y in both instances, the blue and the red, because it's affordable in both. But notice with the red budget line, X isn't affordable anymore. So this is what's also really crazy. X I like more than any line, uh, any bundle on the blue line and on the red line. So the way I know that you like X more than any other bundle on the blue line is because that's what we observed in the first scenario, right? You picked X for the blue budget line, therefore X is better than anything there. But through this indirect revealed preference, you picked Y for the red budget line, and I know you like X more than Y. So if Y was the best you could do with these new prices, I still know X is better than that. So X is better than everything on the blue line and everything on the red line, and I got that from just watching you make two choices, right? So instead of having to ask you about ranking X to Y, Y to Z, X to Z, X to all of these different things, I just watched you make two choices and I already know so much about your preferences. That is so much information from watching you make just two choices. That is the power of revealed preference. So to recap, revealed preference is basically just observing an individual make choices at different prices. I can infer their preferences from many bundles by noting what is affordable at different price points and ultimately seeing what you choose. So revealed preference is a first step to creating a robust framework to classify the behavior of consumers. There is more to come on this. We'll talk about it in later videos, but in the meantime, if you got anything out of this video, thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking and or subscribing, and I'll see you next time.